having some troubles with his heart and requires a defibrillator. Mm -hmm. Many of you know that defibrillators deliver a shock to the heart, but how does that help? I don't know. Okay, I do know. Well, a shock restarts the heart. That's not a heart. That's a heart. Anyway, the heartbeats are controlled by nodes. There's the sinal atrial node and the atrioventricular node. These send electrical impulses that contract different chambers of the heart, which helps them move the blood along the circulatory system. These pulses can cause 60 to 100 contractions per minute. Don't say. I do say. However, problems like cardiac arrest, heart disease, and congenital defects can cause these signals to be jammed, and the heart quivers, <laughs> which is called fibrillation, instead of fully contracting. If the heart can't get back to its regular rhythm, blood cannot move along and oxygenate the body. That doesn't sound like a good thing. Is it? Of course, that's where defibrillators come in. A powerful enough jolt can depolarize the cardiac muscles and force a contraction, which defibrillates ah, the heart, stopping its uncoordinated twitching and allowing it to reestablish a regular rhythm. Of course, this only works if the heart is still beating. It won't work if the patient flatlines, which fortunately, this patient hasn't. Quick, let's check up on him. <laughs> Doctor! This machine is set up in voltages! What? Oh my, this is a problem. Shocks from defibrillators are usually done in joules, but it would seem as though this one is done in well, joules. Really? Yes. But it would seem as if this particular one is in volts. They should really replace it. But they can't very well do it right now. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> so we can help the doctor with this equation. Energy equals voltage times current times time. Hey, times time. Energy is measured in joules. Voltage is measured in, well, volts. Current in amperes, represented by the letter A and time in seconds. In this situation, we know that the energy is equal to 200 because that's the amount of joules the doctor ordered. And C is equal to 60 amperes, I believe. And T is equal to 0 0.0035 seconds. That looks about right. Alright, using this, we can isolate V. And we can do this by dividing both sides by 60 times 0 0.0035. Hold on, it's gonna take me a while. Hold on. 0.0035. I hope you can read that. <laughs> Which gives us V equals 952.384. How did you figure that out in your head? I'm that good. You're Asian. Yeah. And set it to 952 volts. Ready? Clear! Doctor, it didn't work! Then do it again! Clear! <sighs> I got her. And apparently somebody forgot to put in the next panel. Love you. Uh huh. Anyway, there are three parts to a defibrillator that use the transference of electricity to restore normal cardiac rhythm: the capacitor, the inductor, and the power supply. First, let's look at the capacitor. The capacitor stores a lot of energy as electrical charge. This stored energy is released on contact. 
Don't come near me with those things. When the paddles are applied to the patient's body, the patient actually becomes part of the circuit. Electrons from the negative plate move through the patient's body to the positive plate. The electric current flows from the lower plate to the upper plate, and the electric energy is released. This all happens very fast. So to prolong the discharge, the inductors, the wires on the defibrillator, generate electricity through a magnetic field that opposes the motion of the electric current. In this way, it acts as a resistor to the electric current. Lastly, defibrillators contain setup transformers that allow the doctor to choose the voltage level being released into the patient. Additionally, many defibrillators have rechargeable batteries. Doctor, the shock still didn't work. They put it up to 300 joules. Er, the machine is still set in volts. Get it! Ah, jeez, not again. Let's help her out. Using the equation, energy equals volts times current times time, again, we can now substitute 300 joules for E, leave V as it is, 60 amps for C, and 0.0035 seconds for T. Now, as we divide both sides by 60 times 0 0.0035. I apologize for writing so slowly. Be better. Yeah. We end up getting V is equal to 1,428.57 volts. Tell the doctor and hope it works this time. Give me 1,428 volts. Yes, ma'am. Now, everyone, clear! Great job. We just helped save the patient. And we did it using the concept of electricity. Now, before you go, let's go over a brief recap of what we just learned. Heart problems can cause quivers or fibrillation, which prevent the proper circulation and oxygenation of the body. The defibrillator forces contractions to make it restart so that the heart may set a regular rhythm. Shocks from the defibrillator are done with electricity. Parts of the defibrillator circuit include the capacitor, the inductor, and the power supply. And remember this equation. Energy is equal to voltage times current times time. Oh, silly! Nobody wants to hear about learning when they just save someone. Let's go see how our patient is doing. Ow. Oh, what happened? Congratulations, you've made a miraculous recovery. So now you're free to go. Yay! I can't like this was a uh, shocking and yeah did you did you just kill the patient Get out here.